Okay, you're back with the most shadow band man in the land. Time to take a stand with your man, Lamar Aismo, back with another video. Let's go. Now, we left off talking about how uh, Trump's going to win in 2020. But um, in addition to the Democrats um, having a lot of undesirable uh, candidates in terms of the general population, uh, because... Um, you know, again, they're going to scare everybody with uh, buzzwords like socialism. And you're still going to have uh, people that are too sexist to vote for a woman, even if she's actually a better cho uh, choice. And uh, what I forgot to add, though, is that this is already this election has already been d determined um, anyway, because Trump has done so much for the real rulers of the United States in uh, Israel in the Southwest Asia, in that colony, that a brutal apartheid state, he's done so much for them. There's no way that that they're gonna, um, you know, leave him in lurch when it comes to this election or selection, uh, as some would like to say. So yeah, the system is also going to give Trump a boost. And in addition to that, the media is complicit because they're pretending as if uh, Trump, his economy is uh, actually good and he's actually the savior of the United States economy, when in reality, I'm willing to bet the vast majority of his jobs that he created, because I, I've seen different results uh, in terms of him his bringing back manufacturing, because he brought back some manufacturing jobs, but then others were lost, like we talked about Lordstown. So I think the jobs that he added were Mick jobs, you know, McDonald's and service sector type jobs. So. If those are the type of jobs that he added, and in addition to that, cutting off um, uh, food stamp benefits, SNAP for poor workers, people without children at work that barely get enough uh, money to get by had their food stamps cut. So they could cut that, but then uh, they uh, need to give the military uh, ever more money for wars and for threats that don't actually exist. <clears throat> I shouldn't say wars, but threats, you know, they... We spent more money than the next 23 countries combined, uh, according to one of my sources last year on the military. So they got money for that. But for those reasons, and him giving that lavish tax cut, he's not going to be voted out of office. That's just the bottom line when it comes to that. So um, moving along. Oh, uh, one of the, the, um, the, another topic I had in mind was the, uh, I'm calling this the American domino strategy. For example, of why I'm calling it the American domino strategy is because there was a theory during the Cold War that if you allow countries self-determination and they choose communism or to align themselves with the Soviet bloc, it would create a domino effect and the whole world would end up being communist. So for example, if you allow Vietnam to determine his own destiny and to install a communist government, automatically the entire Southeast Asia was going to become communist. And ditto for Indonesia and other places, um, and Angola and, and Central Africa. If you don't murder Patrice Lumumba, the Congo is going to become communist and you can't resource rape the most resource rich country in the world. So America has that, that strategy. After the Cold War, to me, what, you know, what my eyes see is the United States is using the domino strategy. And China and Russia um, won't help or won't prevent this from happening. I say that because um, I'm, I agree with is a YouTuber, uh, an academic like myself by the name of Professor Alexander Azar God. And he actually talking to, um, I want to say it was Scott Bennett. He's a former... Um, U.S. intelligence officer, I believe. I forget which branch of the military he was in. But um, he was telling him not to worry after the Soleimani assassination because Russia and China wouldn't allow uh, the United States to attack Iran or to, um, to topple the government in Iran. I'm not going to use the R word. I'm going to start calling uh, the U.K., France, and the United States uh, the, the fuck-us countries. I'm going to call them regimes because that's what, you know, don't we have the actual regimes in the, the so-called uh, Western democracies. But um, we have oligarchy, oligarchic slash uh, uh, plutocracy regimes where these are ruled by the rich. But um, 
Yeah, the, Russia and China are not going to do anything. If Iran is attacked um, in a war overtly and it goes to a hot war, Russia and China, I agree with Alexander Azagaz's ass assessment. Uh, and he said, one, and I didn't know this, so kudos to him. I got this information from, from him, but... As I, but I, what I knew was that Russia and China did not help Iran with sanctions busting. And I said this so many times. Iran shares a border, a maritime border with Russia, the Caspian Sea. So you would think that Russia would be having Iran's back tooth and nail if it didn't want the United States to ruin the government there or to actually take over and have bases there because then you would have the United States on your southern border just like what just happened with Ukraine. You would have a U.S. friendly, at the very least you'd have a U.S. friendly government allowing the U.S. to cause problems for Russia on its southern border, have access to another waterway that they could put some expensive naval equipment in for the military industrial complex. But, um, you know, it's it said, um, I agree with Alexander as I gone and he used the example of Libya being toppled. He said Libya, and I didn't know they were that tight with Russia. He said that uh, that Libya act had actually pretty much uh, gave Russia carte blanche in you know, in terms of it could use its um, you know to use it for you know as a strategic asset, and they still allowed Gaddafi to be brutally and heinously murdered. Same thing could be said for Saddam Hussein, according to um, Alexander Isaac God. Um, we've seen this several times, and, and what almost happened with Syria, but I guess that was Russia's red line because it actually has a, a large base in the Takia province of uh, Syria. But um, I agree with him. Russia and China aren't going to do anything but run their mouth if Iran is um, ganged up on by the United States and it's... Um, as George Galloway likes to call them, satrapies in the Persian Gulf. There's just no way that um, the Russia and China will intervene. They're too weak-willed, and it, it, you know, it's they never they never challenge um, the the U.S. appropriately when it comes. Which leads me back to my original assessment: all of these countries are under the control of the same families. That uh, who are, that also control all the these intelligence agencies, and we, we're basically ruled by merciless criminal bankers, and uh, that's that's just the bottom line. So Russia and China won't do anything if Iran's attacked. I totally agree with that. They haven't intervened in any of those other places mentioned. They haven't um, gave Iran any meaningful military assistance because it would be one thing not to intervene personally, but. Again, as I've stated, Russia, it took the JCPOA deal for Russia to finally give Iran its S-300s that it paid for, yet Russia gave Turkey S-400s, and Turkey's a NATO member. Should make your eyes bulge like mine. Turkey's a NATO member. Russia's supposed to be at odds with NATO, and they gave a NATO member one of its most effective tools in blocking assaults from all sorts of military aircraft and armaments and you know tools of bombardment I don't trust Russia and China I hope Iran can still stand firm because again it's one of the one of the few if there's hope it's one of the few places that could provide it especially in terms of if it actually combined with the rest of the global south but um, it's not looking good for the good guys. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with that. The Odin Yanan plan is in full effect. That's Israel's uh, directive, because that's really what it was, directive. It, you know, it's, it's a directive for the United States to balkanize Israel's enemies, and it's been doing so. Again, Egypt is complacent. They've totally prostrated themselves to Israel, and they're flat on their face in front of Israel, kissing the ground, because... They have enough natural gas to supply themselves. And then ultimately, this deal with Israel to provide natural gas is going to also lead it to provide natural gas to Europe vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Cyprus, uh, which will cut off Turkey. Which So you'll have the pipeline from you know Israel to Cyprus to Greece, probably, into Europe. The United States wants... And see, this is another way that you know Russia's... Um, I mean, either Russia is in on it or they're just they're just inept because 
They should be doing everything to undermine Israel, especially in terms of this energy deal. And Turkey, for that matter, as well. Russia's in a precarious spot. Um, I don't know, uh, but but again, I leave a little room that maybe Russia's playing uh, 4D chess, and they're actually, like some of my viewers, and I appreciate you viewers who disagree with me on that, I hope Russia's playing 4D chess, and they have a plan that's ultimately going to undermine this evil coalition, because... Um, in, in, in Southwest Asia, especially because otherwise the world's going to be under the control, the direct control of the United States with this domino effect. Because if the last domino ran in Syria, really, because Lebanon can't, you know, Lebanon can't hold its own without Syria, which um, I would like to remind everyone that towards the end of, towards the fall of last year, all of the countries that are outside of uh being vassals of the United States started to have riots, started to have economic problems because of the, the maximum pressure. Lebanon, the people were trying to topple the government for what reason, I don't know. What are you going to replace it with? They say they want just a, a vote, a government based on votes. They don't want a sectarian government. They don't want a, a um, because right now they divide the uh, power between the three religions there, which has been keeping the country from, uh, civil war for decades now but they don't want that they want a, a one man one vote um uh direct elections which you 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 know it's understandable but um given the fact that a, a significant part of your country now consists of former salafi terrorists from syria you might want to reconsider that but uh, lebanon's is, is all an attempt in balkanization we talked about iraq and how the kurds are actually used as a weapon and the sunnis are used to keep Iraq unstable. And which leads me to another point. The prime minister that the, the protests in Iraq that the, the IRGC was trying to help uh, put a stop to that toppled the last prime minister that was voted for by the people, they didn't learn lessons from Egypt. If you don't, In that region, if you don't like a democratically elected leader, just wait to vote him out. Toppling him will only get you a military dictatorship, but it'll definitely get you United States and Israeli um, interference. For sure. They didn't learn that lesson, and now Iraq is in turmoil. We'll, we'll have to see what happens with that, but that it's it's not looking good for the good guys again. The old Neonan plan is in full effect. Syria is, 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 you know, is being balkanized. The oil is being stolen by the United States. Trump, Trump, Trump admits to that. I mean, the one good thing about Trump is that he's, that he's exposed our government here in the United States for the mafioso, brutal... Um, you know, dictate evil supporting evil dictator supporting protection racket slash resource raping uh, thief machine that it is. That's pretty much what we got here. This, the, the, Trump actually admitted to we were taking the oil. This idiot actually came out and said that. You know what I think about that? Warning! Warning! Bullshit alert! It's total BS. But what can you do? Looks like the uh, good guys are on the ropes. Uh, so that's the, the sad news. But that's it for this video. And thanks for watching. God willing, I'll see you in another video.